Well, we're on the bank today with none other than five-time world champion Alan Scotthorn, and we're here specifically to have a look at these. Now, these are the new AS rigs from Drennan. Now, those two initials, A and S, they obviously stand for Alan Scotthorn, and I know he's not going to put his name to something lightly. So, uh, Alan, we spent a long time developing these, I understand. Yeah, we, we've took about 18 months. I mean, 18 months to get the floats up and running so we can mm. use them. So, you know, there's quite a lot of finer details gone into these commercial, this commercial range of yeah. floats. And there's, there's obviously four styles in the range, so that should cover pretty much every commercial situ fishery situation you're going to encounter and for all sorts of species, is that right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've got F1s, we've got carp also, your bigger carp, your smaller carp, and also silverfish. Yeah. So, so these floats will actually cover all of the, the type of fishing that you would do on a commercial. Probably the only thing that I wouldn't use them for is fishing shallow, but I'm sure that in the future we'll develop a range of shallow floats as well. Mm. So, I mean, these are actually based on your own original diagrams and specifications and everything. I've actually seen a folder like this thick with, with all the original sort of diagrams and drawings and, and correspondence and things. Yeah, so, it, there's a lot of information and a lot of detail has gone into this and you've spent a long time perfecting them, haven't you? Yeah, and I think, I think probably last year, John, there were more 200 pound weights of carp caught on our commercial mm. fisheries than what's ever been caught before. Mm. And bearing that in mind, I mean, all these rigs have been put on quite substantial line. Yeah. But line that, again, will let the float work mm. correctly. Mm. But the fish are getting bigger everywhere, aren't there? There's loads of 10 pound carp in, in these commercial fisheries now. And I, I think these rigs reflect that, you know, you, you know, you've got your silverfish rigs, but you've also got big carp rigs. So we, we've got every base covered there, I think, haven't we? Yeah, the, ma the main thing with commercial floats is that you don't want them to destroy when no. you lose a fish. Yeah. I mean, this is when floats are at probably the most vulnerable. When a fish comes off at the net or whatever, mm. a float can easily have the eye pull out or yeah. the wire bend or yeah. whatever. These floats are built so that we don't have that problem. Mm. Well, there are four rigs in the range and they are based on the four AS floats that you use. So I think that brings us quite nicely on to have a look at these floats in a little bit more detail. Yeah. Well, there are four styles of pole rig in the AS rigs range, and uh, they all use these. Now, these are the new AS pole floats that Alan has also had a hand in in the design. And um, well, Alan, just tell us a little bit more about them. The first thing that strikes me is this blackened spring eye. Yeah, yeah if I could just take hold of them four floats. Right, the the blackened spring eye is a different eye to what the normal spring eye mm. is. The the normal spring eye has a, an open eye to the actual eye itself where the line can get caught at the side of the body. Mm. This spring eye has got a formed eye so it's, the line can't pass up the side of it so it's very difficult for the line to break on the actual eye itself and of course because they're blackened in they look nice and they're blending mm. with the float mm. also. And a spring eye, uh, obviously the reason people use a spring eye is it, it can't physically be pulled out, can it? So no, it's actually attached. The spring eye is attached to the bristle rather than into the balsa body. Mm. And this is quite important because at the base of the bristle, there's a plastic insert that forms a solid part to the bristle so that the, the actual eye can't pull out of the actual float because it's on the bristle itself. So you're not going to destroy the eye. And, you, and it's also strengthening the bristle as well, I'm assuming, so... It strengthens the bristle. The bristle can't break off because of the plastic insert. Mm. I think all the time I've been using these floats, I've maybe broke one bristle off when I've been caught mm. in the far bank. Right. And the bristle's just snapped off. But 99% of the time, if you lose a fish, the bristle's still intact, which is, you know, what you need. You need the float yeah. to be very, very durable because we're fishing on commercial. And they're all hollow bristles as well? Everyone's a hollow bristle. Now the other problem on commercials, a lot of the, the smaller lakes, you've got vegetation on the other bank and you need to be able to see the bristle. Solid bristles like cane or just solid bristles don't show up against the bankside vegetation. Hollow bristles do, they, they almost glow from within. They're fantastic to see. Mm. And they just shine like a beacon basically, yeah, don't they? they? Do, but yeah. Plus you've also got obviously yellow, orange and red, red 
colours there as well to choose from because not everyone likes a red tip, do they? And, and a lot of people can only no, see that, yellow. No, that's so. actually something that I insisted in, that we mm. had three different colours because yeah. not everybody's eyes are the same. I know Stevie Gardner can only see a yellow top float, yeah. you know, and he's you know, part of the England team and all his floats are yellow. So you need, you know, the, the three different colours just to suit everybody. And the last part about the, the floats is obviously this body as well, isn't it? It's got a, a special paint on it, I believe. Yeah, the, it's incredible. When you see the balsa bodies actually made and manufactured, the balsa's really soft. You can actually get the balsa and crush it in your fingers. It's incredible that the acrylic paint, once it's added to the body, makes the body so, so hard that the line never cuts into the body. I've got some of these floats that I've probably used as much as 15 times and there's not a single mark on the body itself. It's incredible when you think how many fish you're catching at times. I mean, when you catch 100 pound of carp, you know, the amount of pressure on that body is, is immense. And you know, to use a float 15 times just shows how, how hard the acrylic paint is. Uh, it's all about durability, I think, with these floats and uh, the whole rigs in general, isn't it? So these are perfect for commercial fisheries, perfect for your everyday angler that just wants something that's going to be durable and just last, isn't it? So I think the next thing we'll look at, we'll have a look at these pole winders. Yeah, no problem. I think it's worth pointing out that even the pole winders themselves have been completely redesigned just for these rigs. Haven't yeah, they have, John. I mean, it, you know, the, the original pole winders that we had at Drenham were, were quite soft and, and used to bend when it you mm. know, was, was warm, particularly in the summertime. Mm. So, you know, Peter, being as meticulous as he is, wanted to develop some much stronger, more durable winders. Mm. Mm. No, I think these are made from uh, glass-filled nylon, I believe. So uh, yeah, I think they yeah. are. I mean, you know, if you look at a, you know, just a, a standard normal plastic winder, you can you can break yeah. a normal winder very very easily. So you know, it, it, to have a, a winder that's going to last and not destroy is a mm. you know a good mm. thing. Well, if you look at these ones, I mean, this is the the winder we built on, and you can do anything with that, and it's just not going to break, is it? So. Things like that mean, well, try it with your hands. <laughs> yeah, but very, very difficult to destroy. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, a much stronger substance. Yeah. Now also, all of the winders are printed up. They've got all the information for the rig actually printed on the flat part of the winder, mm -hmm. which is, you know, is fantastic. That's useful, yeah. When you look in your box, you can see exactly what you're putting yeah. on. Yeah. Also, another important part of them, the hook length, is not bent around the end of the winder. The 15 centimetre hook length, the hook hooks up at the bottom of the winder, so the hook length is perfectly straight. Mm -hmm. And this is a good point because that's what's presenting to the fish, that hook length. The rest of the actual suplex line, you can straighten out very easy mm -hmm. by just running your fingers up the line and straighten the line on the rest of the rig. And you've been quite specific about that 15 centimetre or 6 inch hook length. That is that is the length that most people commonly use for pole fishing these days. Isn't yeah, it? A, a 15 centimetre hook length is a nice mm. sort of size you know, mm. for, for fishing and, and using most baits with. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely spot on. So uh, I think we need to, need to have a look at the rigs themselves now. Yeah, let's have a look at the rigs. Okay, the first rig in the range is this one, the F1 and Carp. Now that utilises the AS1 pole float, doesn't it, Alan? So just tell us a little bit more about it. Right, the AS1 rig is developed for fishing for exactly what it says, for fishing for small carp and F1s. It's a float that I'd use for fishing maybe from four metres out to even 16 metres. It's got quite a fine bristle, it's got a 1.5 mil bristle at the top, which is, again, you can see quite easily because it's a hollow bristle, and just a, a 0.6 wire stem at the base of the float, so the float sits well, even in you know, conditions mm. like we've got today where you've got a bit of wind. And what about the line and hooks then, what are we looking at? The line on the rig is 018. Now, of course, you can change the hook length, but the hook length is 015. So you've got an all 15 hook length to an 18mm mainline. Mm. And what about the hook and the hook baits that you'd use with this rig? 
The hook is a, a size 16 wide gate pellet. Again, you can use pellets with this hook, you could use maggots, you can use corn, you can use various baits. Mm. So it's a versatile bottom it's fishing a, rig, basically. It's a bottom fishing rig that you can use with multiple baits. Let's have a look at the shotting on this rig. A lot of my rigs now carry a spread bulk of shot. And this is a, an F1 float, an, an Ace 1 float, with a, a spread bulk of shot above a 15 centimetre hook length. And this is a standard rig that I'd start with on any, any venue where I'm fishing for these type of fish. Now you could bolt this shot all together, pull it down into a bolt, mm -hmm. if you wanted to make more positive bites. Sometimes when the fish are feeding well, a block of shot is better than a spread bolt. So that's your starting point then? That's the starting yeah. point. Mm -hmm. There's other things you can do with the rigs as well. I mean, above the actual float, you could also put maybe some back shots above the float. So you may have to add back shots to your rig, but you could also fish the line very, very short above the mm. float as well. Mm. So it's up to you to decide mm. what to do with the line. Mm. There's 3.5 meters of line to this rig that needs to be cut down to the right distance once you've plumbed up. Mm. So, Quite important. Yeah, I'm saying it's a brilliant all-round rig. I mean, in fact, you just use one rig out of this range, this one would be the most versatile of the lot, isn't it? For F1s and smaller mm. carp, carp up to five pound, this rig is perfect. Mm. Now, if you were catching bigger carp, a lot of our venues have got carp up to 10, 15, even 20 pound, or one caught at White mm. Acres at the weekend then I'd step up to the Ace 2, so we can now have a look at that float in more detail. Okay, the next rig in the range is the Big Carp. Now that sounds right up my street, Alan. It's got an AS2 pole float, so just tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, again, there's lots of venues now where our carp are getting bigger and bigger. I mean, I fished it at, down at Whiteacres at the weekend and there was one 22 pound caught. It was mm. actually foul hooked in the oh. tail, Gran <laughs> Grant Albert. Right. Foul hooked it in the Always tail, but got it in. <laughs> Right, the, with this float it needs a much thicker bristle because you're often fishing with slightly bigger baits, maybe luncheon meat, kilbs of luncheon meat, double corn, worms, full dendrobenas even at times. So you need a slightly thicker bristle and the Ace 2 has got a 1.75 mil bristle attached to the top, a little bit longer also bristle than the Ace 1. Again, it's got the 0.6 wire to the bottom, but the body is slightly more bulbous. Often when you're fishing for carp, you may have to nail a bait and sit very still with a bait mm. and wait for a bite. So that's why the, the body of the float is slightly more bulbous, so it will anchor a bait mm. on the bottom. Again, the line, John, has been stepped up. I mean, you know, the, the weights in the summertime, if we have a summer like we had last year, and you know the temperatures are up, the weights yeah, will be up, and yeah. the, the fishing will be very good. It's not just fish you hook in the mouth sometimes as well, like you just it's, said in a tail. Anyway, yeah, you just need a jawable rig. Yeah, look as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the line on the rig is all 20, all 20 millimeter mm -hmm. line is is very very strong. Important that you leave the actual bottom rubber of the float down from the body. It's better to be like 15 millimeters below the actual base of the float so that mm. there's less pressure from the eye on that O20 mm. millimetre mm. line. That's a very, very good mm. tip. So it's an O20 millimetre main line to, a, again, a robust up length O18 suplex up length, a 15 centimetre mm. up length. The hook, again, is, has been stepped up slightly. It's a, a wide gate carp 14, which, you know, when you put in on worms, and, and bigger baits, mm. double corn, baits like that, the, the hook will take that bait easily. Mm. And is it shotted the same as the AS1 rig? It's shotted slightly different. I think when you're fishing for bigger carp, the bites are a lot more positive. So it's just got a bulk of shots and two droppers below it. Right, sounds pretty good. So uh, um, I think that's the rig I'll be setting up hopefully this summer. Let's move on to the next rig. Um, and I think it's for a little bit more delicate fishing in mind. Yeah, the, the AS3 rig is, is certainly different to this one. <laughs> okay, that's big carp covered. Now we're going to move completely to the other end of the spectrum, and uh, the Silver Fishing F1 rig. Now that uses an AS3 float, which is my personal favourite float in the whole range. Yeah, I must admit, it is, uh, it's a, a cracking float, this one. With it, the AS3, 
was developed for fishing with casters and fishing on the drop. Mm. But of course, a lot of our commercials, where you've got silverfish, you've also got F1s. And you can catch these fish regularly on casters. I mean, a few weeks ago, I had 41 pound of silvers and 41 pound of F1s for an 81 pound catch using this type of float with casters. Casters are a, a, a brilliant bait for, for these type of mixed fisheries and casters work, work really, really well with this float. Purely because of the bristle, I think. The bristle is a, a 1.25 millimetre bristle, a much finer bristle. And also the body of the float is more elongated mm. than, than a carp style float. Of course, coupled with the carbon stem, for fishing on the drop with casters is absolutely mm. perfect. I think it's important to say as well, I mean, I use these with four mil expanders all the time as well, and, and maggots and uh, yeah, it, uh, corn even as well at times. When, when it's in winter time, when the water temperatures are quite low, mm. this type of float, because you're fishing for fish that you know, bite more delicately, this float works really, really well, even, you know, in winter conditions. Mm -hmm. But of course, when summer comes and you're fishing for mixed fish, casters and, you know, mm -hmm. them type of baits, mm -hmm. small pieces of luncheon meat even, pieces of corn, you know, fishing corn on the hook, this float works really, really well. So it's a finesse style rig, and I think the line and hook reflects that as well, doesn't it? Yes, it, so? it does. Yeah, the, the actual line on the rig, again, has been cut down. You've got an O15 diameter main line, and then the hook length is an O117 hook length. A light hook length on quite a heavy main line. But I always like to fish with a slightly heavier main line than what the hook length is, because if you start hooking bigger fish, mm -hmm. you can step up to a, a bigger up wind. I also think that thicker line as well helps alleviate tangles as well, doesn't it? So, yeah, it certainly yeah, does. You, yeah. you get very, very few tangles with that slightly heavier mm. main line. And what about the shotting pattern on this rig? What are we looking at? The shotting pattern I keep quite simple because when you're fishing with casters, throwing casters all the time and fishing down to the bottom, I like to just have a small bolt and two droppers, but yeah. again, small shots, just number 10s. I think that's important as well to note that all these rigs, they're, they're using like number eights, number nines, and number 10 shot. There's no huge BBs and AAs and or really bizarre shotting patterns. These are based on your own diagrams. I've seen the diagrams and uh, every rig, you yeah. you stipulate exactly where each yeah. shot should be These and are the everything. shotting patterns that I often use for commercial fishing. Mm. Yeah, no, I think that's really, really important to, to say. So let's just move on to the last rig in the range, the margin carp. Okay, the last rig in the range is a margin carp. Now, that sounds like a real animal rig to me, so tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, when, when you're fishing for margin fish, I mean, often you're fishing for big fish that you know, you don't need mm. finesse to catch them. You need a robust piece of kit that's not going to let you down. It, I mean, often these fish you catch in the last hour of the match when you, you know, maybe feed two hours from the end and prepare a swim and then go down there, you want your rig not to let you down because a lot of these fish, you know, they can go to 20 pound mm. at the end of the day. So you don't want your rig to let you down. The float, the AS4 float, again, is, is quite important. It's got a carbon stem. There's no wire that can bend or anything. It's got a slightly elongated body, and, but at the top of the body, the two mil bristle supports bigger baits like worms. When you're fishing like two dendrobinas, mm. one dendrobina on the hook, you don't want a, a faffy little bristle on the float. You want a proper bristle that'll support I've that I've seen bait. you today using big bunches of maggots as well, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, so big bunches of maggots, corn. them type of baits, mm. double corn, are mm. brilliant for margin fish because it's a big visible bait that mm. they can pick up mm. on. So you tend to show a little bit of bristle then when you're margin fishing as well, do you? Or? Yeah, I'd shot, shot it so virtually all of the bristle is showing. I rarely shot the bristle down, I tried to leave it all up. A lot of the bites are very, very positive, mm. quick unders mm. that you, you, know, you, mm. you need to lift on. It's important to fish usually quite a short line. You know, if the wind allows you to fish a short line above the float, cutting the, the line on the float on the actual rig now is about 2.5 2 meters, 2 yeah. meters long. And you need to cut that line down. Once you've plumbed up, you need no more than sort of eight inch of line above the float, unless it's windy 
and then a longer line with back shots is then why, better. Why is that shorter line there then? Is that so the fish hook themselves more or, or stability or, or a bit of when, everything? I think when you get a fast bite, if you have a short line on, you can just pick into that right, fish very quickly. Right. So a shorter line is, is quite necessary. So sometimes the fish could even hook themselves. So. Yeah, it's quite possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes yeah. they pull the pole down. Mm. The line on the rig is all 23 very very strong 8.9 pound line you're not going to break that you're not you? going to break it <laughs> you know you, you don't want this rig to let you down so the o23 line won't let you down when these fish come in the margins they only come for one thing john they come to eat mm. so there's no point in faffing about with light kit the up length again is o20 o20 up length very very difficult to break now other things that you've got to consider often when you're fishing in margins the stones on the bank and also you know mm. obstacles in the water mm. as well so the o20 line is very very difficult mm. to break and i know the hook's my favorite pattern for margin fishing uh, the aptly named margin carp isn't it so uh, yeah. i think is it as a size 12 on this a size 12 margin carp you can fish a big bunch of maggots on it two dendrobinas double corn a mm. couple of big pieces of luncheon meat there's you know a, a lot of baits that you can fish on a size 12 mm. up down the side mm -hmm. and same as i said these fish are not finicky when they come in the side they're mm. coming in to eat because mm. it's that time of the day often i'll same as i've said i'll feed two hours to go when you go down there you know they're waiting for you the big lumps mm -hmm. so this is an out and out bagging rig and it's, uh if you're going to do a big weight that's the rig you want that's the rig you want for catching big weights down the margin there's no doubt about that Brilliant. Oh, it's a cracking fish, John. Yeah, on the margin rig, right on cue. <laughs> I think that uh, pretty much shows how good these rigs are. They are unbelievable quality. They're hand tied in Drennan's own factories, so the quality really is second to none. And uh, little things like the winders, the 15 centimetre hook length that won't kink. I mean, there's four styles of rig in the range. I think they're spot on. I think you need to check them out.